The Plymouth Colony Saga told by the women who lived it by the Central Texas Mayflower Colony of the Texas Society of Mayflower Descendants. Videos in the series of the Plymouth Colony Saga include Wives of Colony Leaders, Alice Carpenter Southworth Bradford, the wife of Edward Southworth and Governor William Bradford. Susanna Jackson White Winslow, wife of William White and Edward Winslow. It would be two parts. Wives of prominent couples, Elizabeth Tilly Howland, the wife of John Howland, and Priscilla Mullen Alden, the wife of John Alden. Introducing Susanna Jackson White Winslow, part two. Presented by Ann Bell. Presented of Pilgrim John Howland. As spring arrived, the surviving passengers of the Mayflower slowly began moving into their newly built homes at Plymouth Plantation. After working all winter, Edward Winslow had no one to share his house with. At the same time, after losing my beloved William, I had no home to live with my two small children. After much prayer and contemplation, along with consulting Governor William Bradford, Edward and I decided to marry. Although, although we were both mourning the loss of our spouses, we had always had a deep respect for each other and trusted with time, it would grow into an abiding love. A month and a half later, we were married in a civil ceremony held by Governor Bradford. We were the first to marry in the colony. Through the years, we had a strange but happy life. We were often separated for years at a time. Together, we had three sons and a daughter, along with a baby who died in infancy. It didn't take me long to discover that Edward was a multi-talented leader and a writer of numerous first-hand accounts and pamphlets. During that first tumultuous year, Edward formed a positive relationship with Massasoit, the leader of the Wapanag tribe, whose land we had settled upon. Many people thought Edward's natural ability as a diplomat led to an alliance between the colonists and the Native Americans. His interest in the Wapanak people was crucial in learning how to survive in the new land. To show our gratitude for their help, we invited the tribe to celebrate the, the first Thanksgiving with us. As we settled into our new homes, Edward became involved in defending Plymouth Colony and later the Massachusetts Bay Colony from our opponents and adversaries in England. And he made several trips back and forth between England and Massachusetts. We considered whether I and the children should travel with him to England, but decided against it. I loved the freedom and adventure of living in the new world and we didn't want to risk the safety of our children on the, to the dangers of the open sea. Edward saw that we were financially cared for during the, his long absences, but I was often concerned about his safety. On one occasion, while in England, Edward was arrested and thrown into the fleet prison in London on the grounds that he had performed a marriage ceremony without being ordained. The pilgrims viewed marriage as an event to be handled in the, by the civil magistrates and not in the church. While in England, Edward won favor with Oliver Cromwell, an English general who had overthrown the monarchy and was appointed to several parliamentary committees, including one overseeing the confiscation of property from the royalty. Edward's skills as a politician meant he was in demand. And it also meant he was able to help secure the future of the colony when he was back home in Plymouth. When Edward was home, 
He held several public offices and was elected governor of the colony three different times. I enjoyed the years I had with him and he, while he was at home with me and the children, but he seemed to have an even greater calling. While he was away, we wrote many letters to each other. One time he wrote uh, from London saying he had a portrait painted of himself and was holding a copy of a letter that ended with love, Susanna. I never got to see the portrait, but others told me it was the first painting made of any of the pilgrims. In 1655, Cromwell placed Edward on military expedition to the West Indies with the aim of establishing a new English settlement there. This would have been a high honor and Cromwell wanted him to be governor of Jamaica. Sadly, Edward contracted yellow fever and died May 7, 1655 near the island of Jamaica. He died a God-fearing pilgrim at heart and with him went a very special set of skills that built friendships, won negotiations, and established a new way of life in the new land. I was devastated when I learned of Edward's passing. Even though we had not been able to live together for all our married years, we had been soulmates, and I had learned I had to share his talents with the rest of the world. My world would never be the same. Susanna Jackson White Winslow, reenactor Ann Bell. Technical production Ann Bell. Background music Betty Prince.